Hi guys, as we move forward in our chapter on multiplication of whole numbers, we are going to begin talking about a quick and easy tool that we can use to estimate the products of larger multiplication equations. Now, this week we're not yet moving to exact answers to multiplication equations. We're focusing just on estimates, but that's what this video is going to talk about. We're going to talk about three major strategies we can use to round and estimate the products of larger multiplication equations. The first strategy that we're going to focus on is rounding one factor in a multiplication equation to get an easy estimate. So the name of this strategy, rounding one factor, is the hint to what we're going to do or how many factors we're going to round when looking at the equation 92 times 12. We're going to choose to round one of the factors to make this easier to multiply mentally in our head. If you're looking at this and saying which factor do I choose, 92 or 12, my greatest hint to you is think about which factor you could round to make multiplication easier to do mentally. If I look at this quickly and say I'll round 92 to 90 and leave 12 as it is, 90 times 12 is not something I can do easily mentally in my head. Now, if I look and I say I'm going to leave 92 the way that it is and choose to round 12 down to 10, now I see something that I can multiply a little bit easier in my head. If we think back to our zero trick that we talked about previously, I should be able to find a base factor, base factors of 92 times 1, which is 92, apply the zero trick, and say add my zero. So my estimate of the product of 92 times 12 is 920, because I rounded and said 92 times 10 is a little bit easier to multiply in my head. What I'm going to have you do now is actually take a moment to try this strategy out on your own. I'd like you to grab your math journal and a pencil, set up the following equation, 42 times 13. Once you've taken a moment to set up your equation, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and utilize the strategy of rounding one factor to round and get yourself an estimate for the product of the equation 42 times 13. So take a minute now, pause your video, test it out on paper. Now, tomorrow in class, I am going to ask to look at the work that you've done with this video, so make sure you're practicing. Pause now. Hopefully you took a second to work this out in your journal. You should have an answer that looks similar to the one written in blue. I decided after kind of checking out my two factors for just a minute that if I rounded 13 it would round down to 10 and then I would be left with the multiplication equation 42 times 10 which based on the zero trick I should be able to do pretty easily in my head. 42 times 10 equals 420. Now we're going to move on to our second strategy that we could choose to utilize. The name of this strategy is rounding both factors in a multiplication equation. So you'll see here I have the original equation that we started back on strategy 1, 92 times 12. Now as the name gives you a hint, what you're going to do is round both factors in this equation. This is a little bit easier to do because you can kind of just jump ahead and say I don't have to choose which factor because I'm actually going to round both. So if we complete our process of rounding on both the numbers 92 and 12, 92 rounds to 90, 12 rounds to 10. Now I have the easy mental multiplication equation of 90 times 10. My base factors are 9 times 1 is 9. Two zeros in my original equation equals 900. So my estimated answer is 900. The product, the estimated product, would be 900. So I'd like to give you a minute now to do the same thing we did with strategy 1. I'm going to give you a minute to try this out on your own. You can set up the equation 62 times 17 in your math journal. Grab your pencil and get ready to try to solve using the strategy of rounding both factors. So go ahead, 
Get your paper set up and pause the video now. Hopefully you took a minute to pause the video and test out the strategy of rounding both factors in your math journal. So if you rounded 62 properly, it would round to 60. If you rounded 17 properly, it would round up to 20. Now I can use my zero trick and my base factors to say 6 times 2 is 12, two zeros in my original equation, which means two zeros in my final answer. So the estimated product of 60 times 20 is 1,200. The third and final strategy that we're going to talk about is rounding to use compatible numbers. Now, if you think about the word compatible, it means things that work well together. So I'm not going to tell you you round one factor or both factors. I'm not going to tell you that you should always round up or round down. What I'm going to tell you is that you have to use your knowledge of factors to round your numbers to compatible numbers that you can multiply easily in your head. So I'll show this to you using the equation above, 98 times 83. Now I'm going to take a minute and look at these two factors, 98 and 83. If I look at the digits in the tens place, 9 and 8, I know how to multiply 9 times 8. I know the base, fac the base factors 9 times 8. If I know that 9 times 8 equals 72, okay, let's kind of keep thinking through this. If I round 98 down to 90, now I know that breaks the rules of rounding, but again, I'm trying to create compatible numbers that I can multiply easily in my head. I'm going to round 98 down to 90. I'm going to round 83 down to 80. Now I've given myself an equation that I should be able to easily multiply mentally. 9 times 8 is 72, two zeros in my original equation. So compatible numbers is not a specific strategy that I can say round both factors, round one, round them up, round them down. What I would say to you is you have to use your knowledge of your math facts and your factor pairs that you know and round the numbers that you're multiplying, round them to factors that you can easily multiply in your head. So if you hadn't guessed it yet, you've probably figured out by now that I'm going to give you a second to try it out on your own. So I want you to set up the equation 32 times 27 in your math journal. I want you to try out the strategy of rounding to use compatible numbers. So look at the factors that you have, 32, 27. Consider what you might round those numbers, those factors to, to make it easy to mentally multiply. Good luck, pause the video now. So hopefully you've had a minute to try this out in your journal. So if you check it out here, I actually showed two different ways that people might have used compatible numbers. I originally looked at 32 and 27 and thought, if I round both of them, 32 rounds to 30, 27 rounds to 30, my compatible numbers are three and three, or 30 and 30. That I can easily multiply in my head is 900. Now, some of you may have tried out the equation on the right. 32, you might have originally looked at and thought, maybe I should round that to 30. And 27, I could round down to 20. 3 and 2 are also compatible factors. I would accept either of those answers. You rounded both of your numbers to find compatible numbers that you could easily multiply in your head. So to summarize what we've learned about today, guys, we learned that we can round to estimate the products of larger multiplication equations. We learned that there are three major strategies that we can utilize when estimating products of multiplication equations. We can round one factor, we can round both factors, or we can round to create compatible numbers. The point is, any one of those three strategies is going to help us get to a place where we can look at a larger multiplication equation and estimate what the product will be.